So, um, hello everyone. Um, I'm Martin uh, from the Nairo City University, a very small university in the north of Japan, and I'm also um, representing the Moodle Association of Japan, or I'm a, an executive member in charge of what we call our showcase, which is uh, something that I'll be talking about today. And my name is Silla Bas. I work as instructional designer in the Tallinn University of Technology. Okay, so um, let's go. So a brief outline of our presentation. Um, we'll start with um, some general considerations in assessing courseware. Um, I have one framework called the assessment purpose triangle that we'll take a look at. Uh, then Sile will um, present the Estonian system uh, quality e-course quality label. I'll talk about our Moodle Association of Japan Open Courseware Showcase, and then we'll have a little bit of a discussion comparing the two models, and then end with some questions and comments um, from the audience. Okay, so I'd like to start by inviting all of you to um, just think about what makes a good Moodle course, or what are some qualities of a Moodle course that would make it great Moodle course for you. If you have any easy something to just pass. easy to pass. Okay. Just shout it out. We won't have time to. Accessibility. I heard that. That's a level up. My colleague Kadri already said that uh, she made a little introduction, so I will continue now. <laughs> Any other? Uh, I guess you've already done this then. Okay. So, um, oh, I jumped ahead then. Okay. So, uh, I thought um, we could take a look at the, uh, this model by Archer. Uh, who proposes that uh, this an assessment purpose triangle, and she talks about um, uh, as priorities for um, evaluating uh, courseware that uh, balancing finding a balance between three sides of the triangle so there 's uh, she says there 's assessment for learning which i 'm calling uh, pedagogical things, and these are things that um, you know, about the course content, the learning material. Um, there's uh, assessment for accountability, which are kind of ethical or community, communal considerations, and uh, assessment for certification, progress, and transfer, um, which would be sort of more institutional things. And the, I, I've found this, uh, this model and I thought that it would be, uh, it, it's a very good way to balance the um, priorities uh, that depend on, on your own situation, because there are so many reasons that you might wish to assess. Okay. Uh, we use rubrics, okay, and um, the, the nice thing about rubrics is that they uh, allow us to describe multiple assessment purposes. Uh, or criteria and quantify them by uh, assigning data points or numerical values. And rubrics can have an instructional function for content creators, uh, provide transparency, and can be both uh, holistic and analytic. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And another thing to consider is uh, who does the assessing. Oops. Okay, um, and it's important to give all the all the shareholders with the vested interests uh, an equitable, um, but not necessarily equal, voice. So who you would engage to do the assessing of uh, courseware uh, is something to consider. <laughs> okay, we're both very nervous, so. Pardon the, the confusing. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the encouragement. Okay. So, anyway, um, as as far as we know, we've so far we've just found two um, models 
uh, that to systems for assessing Moodle courseware. Uh, we have this one in Japan, and uh, like to, and Silly will now talk to us about the Estonian course quality label. That's how the different logos look. Look, uh, we add them to the. Uh, no, I don't want. I want to speak here. Then I can see you. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Better. Yes, yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, and I will shortly give you an overview how we assess the courses. So Estonian e-course quality label. Uh, has an aim, and the aim is to increase the quality of e-courses in higher education, uh, vocational training, and general education. That means everyone from every level can, can submit their course, and we will uh, evaluate them uh, equally. So even if you have 100% e-course, uh, maybe doctor studies or something like this, and uh, there's a, a half e-course uh, in high school, we uh, evaluate them the same with, with the same matrix. That's how the logos look like. We uh, now the course authors can use them to promote their course, and also we add the year because uh, the the quality label doesn't doesn't mean that your course is excellent forever. You have to update that, and that motivates the course author, authors to renew the label. Uh, our uh, matrix is based on ADI model. Uh, I'm going to show it to you. So our uh, the the <laughs> course authors have to use online self evaluation and. Uh, there, is, there are 29 questions that they have to answer, and all the questions are based on the ADI model. Was that understandable? Like, yeah. So I can, I can just briefly tell that to the people who didn't understand. Uh, first, like the analysis part is to, uh, to uh, self-evaluate uh, the course, uh, no, there are questions about the uh, uh, course out outcomes and syllabus. The de designing part has questions about planning, um, the learning and teaching process. Uh, the de development part uh, is having questions about the e-course structure, creative commons, uh, audiovisual mediums, uh, implementing uh, there we check like uh, how we see the course in real life, how the students interact with each other, how the course actually works. And the evaluation part is about like uh, what the teacher does or the course author does after the course has ended, the semester has ended, how they uh, use the feedback, how they grow their course. And uh, here you can see that the uh, uh, submitted courses per year have risen every year, and this year we had the highest number, and that also uh, meant that we had to hire highest number of judges. Oh, I forgot to explain what's on the chart. So the blue uh, uh, represents uh, the submitted courses, and yellow sub uh, means how many courses got the label. So not every course that submitted uh, gets the label. And here the uh, green part means that uh, how many ju uh, judges we had per year. Uh, this year we had more, actually more than 74 judges because we had so many new, uh, new courses. And uh, yellow means uh, how many new judges came because every year we have more and more courses. That means we have to invite more and more judges to come to take part of it. And the judging process is actually quite long. It starts with the seminar for the new judges because they don't know how to do their work and then we explain and show them. And then uh, the grouping will also be decided that every group 
uh, there is one experience, experienced judge who has done the job almost like 10 years, and there's new one who has never done it. So the new ones will always learn uh, by, by the expert. Uh, we always uh, sign the confidentiality agreements because we will uh, get access to the real Moodles. Otherwise, you will not know uh, how the plugins work. And uh, our uh, big universities are developing our own uh, Moodles, so the, our Moodles also look differently. So if no, that, that gives like a better overview of how the course actually works. And you will also see real life actions, hopefully, and uh, how many teachers are there, and forum posts and everything. Uh, after that, uh, we have group uh, uh, feedback assessment when we, in a group, decide how many points we will give to the uh, course. Every step, we are in all, every step, we are using the same matrix, what I showed you, with the 29 questions. So it's not every step has different group, uh, matrix, it's always the same. We are always asking the same questions. And after that, uh, there is like the final seminar where uh, 10 best courses will show their, uh, no, they will be presented and also the annual winner will be voted. Uh, and after that, we will show, uh, we will send out uh, anonymous feedback to the course author. And now back to Martin. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so uh, briefly, oh, the mic. Briefly, I'll uh, just take a quick. Let's take a quick look at what we have in Japan. We call it the showcase, uh, the Moodle Association of Japan. Uh, we have a Moodle, which w with some um, customized plugins and uh, people uh, share courses. And this is what the, uh, the site looks like. Um, we share only courses and students, uh, or sorry, teachers, content creators will drop their MBZ file into this, the window and uh, submit them for assessment, okay? Uh, going back to the, um, the purpose, uh, purposes of assessment triangle, um, Assessment for learning, so of, these are our goals in, in uh, the assessment of the showcase. Uh, we strive for excellence of uh, learning content, of course. So we're looking for well-designed and varied activities that incorporate multimedia and creative plugins, uh, lots of interactivity, timely feedback, and uh, an appropriate amount or uh, the, an extensiveness of content. Um, Assessment for accountability, uh, we are the, uh, the Moodle Association of Japan, and so uh, you know, we, we try to serve the, the Moodle community of, in Japan, the, the Japanese community of Moodle users. So in that sense, we value courseware in Japanese. Um, and this is a, a, a situation very common in Japan. We have a lot of uh, active language teachers uh, in Japan, so a lot of uh, the courses are language courses in English, and we're trying to get more and more Japanese Moodlers to c contribute courseware. Um, we seek to promote a wide range of content and topics. Um, we value courseware that provides fair and transparent assessment, okay? And uh, we try to encourage teachers to create original content and share it. So. Uh, we're looking for open education resources. Um, so I think that's probably our strongest priority. Um, so our balance is of these in this triangle is more towards, I think, accountability. Um, in terms of the last one for certification progress and transfer, um, we want to provide an opportunity for advancement. So uh, you know we're looking for um, we, we want to help teachers build their own portfolios for, you know, in their resume or uh, you know, their career. Uh, we attempt also, I think, to um, posit the Middle Association of Japan as a body of authority uh, of, you know, with, we're, we're Moodle experts, or we have a certain amount of Moodle expertise, and perhaps even um, these goals are perhaps a little bit illusory, but uh, you know, create a Japan-wide standard of quality in e-courses. Um, this is just a, a quick look at the assessment rubric, and um, we have five categories of assessment, um, uh, this variety of activities and content, and 
each we have a, a scale, um, a range of points that we can give uh, for, for different levels of, of accomplishment in each of these five categories. And we also allow for some uh, holistic. This is the, the rubric that we've been using since 2021. And so at the bottom here, the plus is uh, we have uh, the judges will put in other considerations or comments looking at the course, its context of use, um, and that, that can change the, uh, the total score. Okay. Um, as for the judging process, uh, we have a, an annual Moodle Moot. Um, we just said we get well, somewhere around 10 courses submitted. Um, sometimes a little more, a little less. We have a panel of about 10 judges, and we set a submission deadline, so um, it's usually about a week before the moot. Each judge gets three, four courses. Um, someone compiles, these days it's me, compiles uh, the results. Um, judges also will post feedback on, on the showcase, the website, that, or the, the Moodle site that I showed before. We have a judge meeting uh, when the moot starts and then an award ceremony, and you get certificates and prizes. And so the, the lucky winner, uh, we have first, second, and honor, third, or honorable mention uh, awards, we'll get a certificate, and this wonderful Keep Calm Middle on um, coffee mug. Okay. So, um, yeah, if we, we have two models, two different systems that we've, you know, rushed through, <laughs> presented. Um, so comparing them, what we think of as strengths, and um, Sila and I will just kind of have a conversation. So some of the, the, the differences and similarities of Moodle courseware, for example. Um, we're concerned, in, in Japan, it's only Moodle. We are, we're the Moodle Association of Japan, so we, of course we, our goal is to promote Moodle, and we want Moodle. Courseware. How about in Estonia? Uh, we use Moodle by accident. Right now, it's supported by the government, so uh, we the big universities have their own Moodle. So we de develop it uh, our own. But uh, schools, higher, uh, high, <laughs> like secondary schools, and like uh, they 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 use uh, Moodle because it has a nice. Uh, uh, tests and they can do complicated things that they couldn't do in uh, Google Glass Classroom, and it's it's funded by uh, by government. So the majority of your courses are Moodle courses, but yeah, it's it's, not it's by by accident because and also like uh, what uh, we have a bigger like we have vocational schools and uh, some. Uh, and like secondary schools, they, they can send their courses, but it's only like private schools also send only one, one course per, per, per institution. But uh, big universities, we compete. So half, half of the courses actually come from our university uh, and half come from Tartu. And so we, we are the bigger uh, competi competition. We have bigger competition, but all the rest, like right now, this year we had like 16 different in institutions send their courses. It doesn't like, like they, they are from Moodle, but it's, it's still like, uh, it's not the main, like everyone can send. We have wiki pages being sent and like every, every LMS, it doesn't like, it, it's not Moodle centered actually. By, by accident it is, like that's no fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, in, in Estonia, you also have a, a self-evaluation uh, process. So you, you begin with, uh, you get student uh, feedback, and then the, the person, the content creators also evaluate their own courses before they submit. Yeah, the you know? bureaucracy is quite, quite long, and uh, uh, the course author has to use the same matrix for self-evaluation, and also uh, uh, no, your your uh, teachers, professors, they don't have to do anything. They can just upload the course and it's done. But our professors, they actually have to do a lot. And sometimes they can't send their course only because of the bureaucracy. Maybe someone in the institution doesn't give their uh, student feedback and then they, they can't send it. I had one course that was not sent last year only because of that. But yeah. 
uh, we, do, we don't have a, a self-evaluation uh, process in, in Japan. Uh, we, we want people to submit. It's, it's, we want people to share. So we kind of lower the hurdles. And uh, if you got something, come on, give it to us. You, know? um, you, have, uh, you have access to the original course, e-course site? Do yes, you? always. Always. In our case, um, the courses are actually uploaded. So the whole course is on uh, a Moodle site that we call the showcase. And uh, if occasionally, a, a, a course, a, someone who submits a course will give a link to the site where they actually use it. But uh, we have the ability on the showcase to see the whole course and to see how it works and to experience it as well. And shows that it does work. Yeah, and we, in, if they have uh, additional plugins and stuff, we, we attempt to keep the showcase updated with uh, any plugin that's required for the, that course. Yeah, I like that you can uh, download and you get you can see all the technical information. That's uh, that's one that was one of the favorite things that I discovered in your rubric. Right. We we also have a versioning feature, so. Um, when someone submits a course, they do provide a lot of um, metadata. Um, they tell us what Moodle version it's running on, what it is on the original site, and uh, we have information about the plugins that someone who wants to download the course would, um, would need to install on the site. Yeah, we, we just uh, have the access, and we'll, we can see the course exactly like a teacher or professor sees, course author. We get the same same uh, roles in Moodle. One thing that you, um, see that you told me was that uh, when you notify people who are wanting to um, have their courses assessed, you offer support, preliminary support or preparation support before they submit. Yes, we, we pro start promoting already as soon as we can because we want uh, uh, our professors to get the label and we want to help them out and they can turn to us and ask help and that's why we are working there yeah, anyway I'm, I'm doing it um, that's my job to help them with the e-courses for us it's always a bit of a task to get people to submit courses and occasionally someone who's thinking about it will ask for advice and uh, want, want some help um, in, in Estonia as well, your judges are anonymous. Yes, this is something that I, have, I had never thought about, but uh, your rubric is like this, that I was able to see uh, courses that are maybe three years old and what people were analyzing and telling, I could not get that information. I am doing my own work in my own group and uh, I will not see what the other courses are, what feedback the other courses are getting. I actually have to ask my professors for them to send me the in, uh, feedback. And even then, I don't know who gave that to them. So it's totally anonymous. And your, your, your rubric is good because I can see what, let's say, Adam told you three years ago. I think it's fun. And uh, bonus points you have as well for uh, sort of a holistic thing or interesting? Yeah, even though uh, we have 29 questions, we still have this part for bonus points because let's say someone has done something so innovative that no one has done it before and there is no question where I can put the point, then I can still put bonus points and explain why I did that. Um, and one other difference is in Japan, our judging process is quite short. It's just about one week, really, from the time of um, submitting to uh, the award ceremony. Yours is quite long. Uh, yeah, like I, I showed you the process. It takes, it takes lots of time, lots of teamwork, and lots of uh, agreement, finding the consensus. And we, we found, I showed a picture of uh, our uh, certifications, our certificates, and the mug cup. That's about the extent of our prizes. Um, we want people to, to share, and it's, it's all very familiar. <laughs> um, but you have quite a large cash prize for first place. 
as the, that makes them motivated to take part of this. <laughs> and they are motivated, yeah. Okay, we have uh, five minutes left. Anyway, uh, it's a brief introduction of two systems and uh, what would, uh, how would yours be different, any different, how our priorities are different, what would your priorities be? Um, these assessment models are uh, works in progress, like the courses themselves, uh, you know, they, they continue to develop. Um, yeah, that's where we are, okay. Thank you. Okay, yes, we have some time for questions. Actually, I just wanted to say the, the Estonian system is quite new to me, but I did have the honor of being one of the judges in the Japanese system at a Japanese Moodle Moot in 2016, so that wasn't new to me. Um, yeah, we have a question over there, so I'll leave you to it. Hi, we use um, Quality Matters as our um, course judgment system rubric thing um, but do you the ones that you have do they have any Moodle specific questions or is it in Japan or is it still mostly platform agnostic is it still sorry it's still mostly what so does it m do you have any Moodle specific questions like is it did they use this tool well did they use forums did they use quiz or is it still very much more about the pedagogical strategies in the course um, yeah that's one thing that we didn't get to admit. We, we we of course look at the content but um, most of the judges are past winners of uh, of, of the course uh, of the court the showcase and, and because most of the contributions are by language teachers, you know, like we get a physics course or something, I, I don't know anything about physics, um, you know, so, uh, so, yeah, uh, it's, we're looking for moodly things, you know, so Moodle is the priority, but, um, yeah. <laughs> So the rubric. This is a this is a complete uh, rubric that has been completed, and you can see that the, the third category they gave quite a low score, only four, because it's uh, uh, it was a, a language course, so it's not terribly highly valued because we get a lot of that. Yeah, I know it's not it's not readable. Yeah. Okay, any more? Yeah, one, time for one more, yes. Hi, so I think this is probably a question that applies to both, but what status does your judgment have back in the contributing institution, and what happens, as I've only got one question, I'll make it a two-parter, and what happens if there's a conflict between your judgment and what the organisation contributing is requiring? Are you referring to both our systems, or yeah. both and uh, either? Yes. Uh, I, in Japan, I don't think we really have that problem. Teachers submit on an individual basis; they're not particularly representing their university uh, or anything. Um, yeah, I don't think we've had any. Would it be prestigious for them to go back in their institution and say, put it forward as part of their professional portfolio that? they had achieved a certain judgment from you, or is it just... Yes, th yes, definitely. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a valued certificate that teachers do use. Yeah, so the institutions value your, your judgment, but you don't we, have we any conflict. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 good. Uh, the Estonian system? And, uh, sure. uh, we have uh, this, uh, like I showed you before, the process, it is like this, that three judges will uh, charge uh, three courses and if they don't get consensus for some reason they are still like they don't find the consensus then a mentor like a, like a one really really expert will will help them out so and yeah, it might happen yeah and they would put that forward within their school as something prestigious for them would they that yes. your your judgments would be seen as a positive thing back in their institution 
the institution doesn't see the feedback. The right. Only the course author, because they have to log into the online system and there they will see it. Yeah. The, the other one, no, no one will see but it. But would the course author take it to you know, their manager and say, look, this is a good course. We can because continue it's later because we're out of time. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah, sure. I'm happy to discuss on that topic.